Introduction. I grew up loving books. They were my escape, my safe haven in a home filled with great turmoil. They were also my classroom and playground. They made me braver than I believed, stronger than I feared, and smarter than I thought. As an adult, books have exposed me to more mentors than I could ever work with directly, allowing me to grow into the entrepreneur and human being I want to be. Any knowledge I could ever want is forever at my fingertips, thanks to books. I can learn from experts who are popular today or sages who lived hundreds of years ago. And through books I have written, I can speak to thought leaders who are yet to come. It was only when I began to sit on the other side of the page, as the one to write the words for someone else to learn from and escape into, that I finally saw that being an author was so much more than just imparting knowledge. It was granting freedom, both to my reader as well as myself. When I wrote books for my business, it spared me from having to work in close contact with people who didn't appreciate what I had to offer. By letting people experience my unique brand of expertise and humor, they could decide whether I was a good fit for them without any pressure from me or my having to endure the agony of cold calling prospects. Writing my books opened doors to speaking engagements, joint ventures, partner collaborations, and other opportunities that grew my business organically. And this enabled me to attract clients who were a good fit to work with my company, rather than going through the awkward cycle of pitching my services and hoping for a positive response. I learned along the way that there's a right way and a wrong way to do this. Let me start first with the wrong way, because this book is all about how to do it the right way. And the wrong way is something I see happen way too often. The wrong way to write a book is to sit down and do a brain dump of everything you want to say. What? Isn't that what we're supposed to do? Share all our deep wisdom and knowledge? The answer is yes, but it must be done within a certain framework. Let me share a quick story to illustrate my point. When I was in my 20s and 30s, I spent years working in computer software development. I was a technical writer and I often served as the liaison between software developers and the end users who would be working with the software when it was released. The developers were happy little coders who created functionality they thought would be useful, cool, or just plain fun to use. But oftentimes, they did their development work with little input from the users. And we regularly discovered that the techies had no idea how real people were going to be using their software. So the functionality or interfaces the developers thought would be good to create repeatedly caused problems for those who were required to use the system. I often see the same thing happen when people write a book or even content for their website. These authors are guilty of writing the content they want to share with little thought regarding who they're writing it for. They have a message they're passionate about sharing. So the exercise is more about getting out the words that are in their heads than communicating with someone specific. While that technique may work well for some fiction writers, it defeats the purpose of writing a book for most nonfiction authors, and indeed quite a few fiction writers as well. Most nonfiction writers have a specific message they want to communicate. And if they do that without giving thought to who their audience is, their message can easily fall flat. And fiction writers targeting, for instance, a juvenile market need to spend quite a bit of time considering their reader. They need to align the vocabulary they use and the information they share with the grade levels of the kids who will be reading their books, especially if they hope to get their texts and stories into school systems. Goal-Oriented Publishing Seeing how frequently books are written without regard to the readers led us to develop a process that we use with the authors we work with at our publishing company, Emerald Lake Books. We call this technique our goal-oriented publishing framework. This framework consists of three main parts, each of which aligns with a certain set of activities and stage of the publishing process. The first focuses on the reader and the experience the author wants them to have. The second addresses the author and their business, even if their business is only as a professional writer. And the third area concentrates on the book and its overall impact. Each focus involves different activities and yields different benefits. And we'll go through those in more detail in the pages that follow. But by creating goals for each of these focus areas, this framework enables the author to be more intentional about their writing, the design of the book, their marketing plan, and the supporting materials needed for their book. It also redefines what success means to them. Instead of focusing on selling a specific number of books as their benchmark for success, 
the author shifts their focus to the outcomes they want their reader to experience, their business to achieve, and their book to create. The sad truth is, most books never sell more than 250 copies over their lifetimes. But we consistently find that when our process is used, our authors easily sell those 250 copies or more during the first few months after their launch. Much of their success comes down to the fact that they're not focusing on book sales, but on other measures they feel passionate about and capable of achieving. The sales just naturally follow. The aim of goal-oriented publishing is to help you see beyond your book to the impact you can have when you publish with a specific purpose in mind.